Welcome to part one of our video series on the basics of athlete programming. In today's video, we're gonna talk briefly about the need for a conceptual overview or sometimes called a deterministic model. So why would we create these flow models as seen in the picture here? Well, they're really useful at helping us to identify the outcome that we want or need, understanding the qualities that underpin certain performances and seeing what it is that we need to address. So let's assume that my aim is to improve my 400 meter running performance, which obviously 400 meeting, meter running is a very complex sport. And I can think what factors are important to that performance. I might think it's speed, power, strength, or even endurance, but without really knowing, all I can do is think about it logically and consult the literature or other expert performers and coaches. There is no need when you're creating these models to go too deep. Think about what it is that you can easily control. So here we have examples of very deep or complex models, both physiological and biomechanical. These models are really good at picking apart the mechanistic variables of performance. So the real specifics that sports scientists are concerned with and how they impact performance. The good thing about them is that they're thorough but they're not very practical. So for you, a better aim might be to create a simple model. So think about what it is that you can control. So here I have an example of a physiological model, again, on 400 meter run performance. Obviously we're concerned with running speed, and that might be composed of maximum speed, speed endurance, and their sub-qualities. If I'm looking at the biomechanical factors of that running performance, Obviously, average running speed is again important, and that can be broken down into stride length, stride frequency, and their sub-qualities. Deciding which of those factors are easy to address and which, is which are worthwhile is difficult to do. One good way is to think of your intended goal or outcome and work backwards from that. So you might think about what are your strengths and weaknesses? What resources do you have at hand? What is worthwhile trying to address and what is pointless? And is there a model to copy from a coach or expert performer that has come before you? Really what you're trying to do is identify what makes the best performance and see what's stopping you from reaching that. Once you have understood those things that underpin successful performance and how you relate to them, then you can start to design your own training program. Thanks for watching.